Optimizing your life for hustling and grinding is like optimizing your life around going pee. No, pee is something you have to do. It's not the goal. You don't go, woo! You know what my goal is? Hit the toilet seven times a day. No, but you have to do it to survive. So grinding and working hard and hustling is not what you optimize for. It's pain. Why would you optimize for pain? But as a, it is a necessity. And if you look at an actual scientific explanation of what makes you successful, it is not just hard work. If that's true, construction workers would be the wealthiest people in the world. Waiters and busboys, they work harder than the owner. The most scientific psychometric personality test is called Hexaco. It's more accurate than Big Five, which used to be. It's much more accurate than Myers-Briggs, INFJ, ENTP, all that stuff. So Hexaco tests you on 26 facets of your personality. And one of them is called conscientiousness. And it's been proven over and over by scientists, conscientiousness is the most correlated with business success. Define conscientiousness. So, yeah. so then it divides into four sub facets. Organization, perfectionism, diligence, and prudence. So the real truth is hard work is 25% of the formula because diligence is known in the common language as hard work, okay? So if you just think diligence alone will get you success, you're like a basketball player that thinks you'll play in the NBA because you can shoot free throws. Ah, there's, you ever seen the best free throw shoes in the world? They're old 70 year old men who shoot underhanded, but they don't play in the NBA because the NBA is not all about free throws. So NBA is scoring, defense, free throws maybe is one component, rebounding, assists, there's a lot of components. So the other three you have to get good at. So the first one is perfectionism. People, you have to know how to double check your work. It's that simple. It doesn't mean you're always a perfectionist, but it means when it's important, when you're a pilot of an airplane, double check before you go. They, if you get on a plane, you hear the pilots double checking, the co-pilot going, you know, hydraulics. And the guy goes, hydraulics. And that's why planes don't crash. And it's called Six Sigma. It's three defects per million. Your goal in business and in life on the important things is to make three mistakes per million transactions. And the only way you do that is by being a perfectionist in terms of double checking. So that's 25%. The next one is organization. I can't tell you how much better my life is and anybody watching this will be if you wake up every single day and you take 10 minutes. I have yellow notepads sitting all around my house. I got that from Bill Gates. Bill Gates built Microsoft at 17 by locking himself in a hotel room with six yellow notepads and he wrote out the whole basic code for DOS and things that built Microsoft, okay? He became the richest man in the world 18 years straight because he was organized enough to lock himself in a room and think through his day. And so what I try to do, and whenever I do this, I have a great day. Whenever I don't, I notice it. Be organized a little bit, 10 minutes. I actually have this little couch thing outside of my shower and I put a notepad by it. I take a shower when I wake up. I walk over to that, I kind of sit there, and I just write out, I mean, it can be as little as three main projects you want to get done that day. So organization is the other 25%. So now, and then you have diligence, which is hard work, hustle, and, and perseverance. But the last one is the kicker. And this is what I was talking about, the rewiring that has to happen. The last one is something called prudence. Scientists call this prudence. Prudence is the ability to make the right decision. And I can't tell you how many entrepreneurs and non-entrepreneurs, even me at times too, I'm not special, I'm, I'm lumping all of us in this. Because of our upbringing society, our goal is, let's say our goal is like that camera right there. So let's assume that's north. So I have this compass in my brain and my goal is to go right there. Let's say it's a mile away, so north. What happens if society, my upbringing in school, wired my compass exactly backwards? So I think, let's say I can't see that camera, but I know I wanna go north, so I pull out my, my compass, and it points that way. So I just take off walking, and I do it in an organized fashion. I do it in a perfectionist manner. I'm perfecting my steps and my posture. I'm also working on you know hard work and hustle. Keep walking towards your goal. Well, the truth is, if you go south when you should go north, you could have gone one mile, but the earth is about 24,000 miles in circumference. So you get to walk 24,000 miles and you'll come up on the backside and you will get your goal. That's most entrepreneurs. 
The average person takes 20 years to become a millionaire. 90% of businesses fail within the first five years, 80 to 90, depending on what statistic. Most people, I did the math once, the average American has $60,000 saved by the time they're about 60 years old. So my answer, I did the math, you can do this with a simple financial calculator. Everybody in America, your parents, everybody you know will be a millionaire if they live to 160. At 160 years old, if you take 60 grand at age 60 and you give it a decent return on investment, 8%, 10%, you'll be a millionaire at 160. But the problem is, the great philosopher, I think it was Aristotle or Socrates said, the problem is art is long, but life is short. Mm -hmm. The art of living and getting to your objective is long, but it doesn't have to be. It's long if your compass is backwards. So the whole point of what I was saying about adventure at the beginning is I'm trying to take myself and point it to the true north. And you have to learn that from books and mentors and life experience and listening and finding in-person mentors and all those things. They help adjust your compass. And most people are going to get what they want just about 40 years longer. And that, I live in Beverly Hills. Trust me. You go downtown Beverly Hills. There's other people. Like I have, I like to collect cars, it's not so much. I've always liked cars. It's not a materialistic show-off thing like a lot of people think. My grandma said I love cars when I was one. I used to try to turn the car on in the garage. You go to downtown Beverly Hills, full of Ferraris, the most Ferraris per capita in anywhere in the world. Every one of the guys is 80 or 90. Why do you want a Ferrari at 80 or 90? You want a walker? You get a, somebody's gotta walk you into your and then you're gonna get in a Ferrari. You know how dumb you look? To me, at 90, you want to be playing with your grandkids. And I've wondered, like, why the heck is everybody 90 in this town, excluding people who inherit their money from their dad? But, and I realize we're set up for failure because we think we're going north, but we're going south. That's why 50% of people who get married divorce. 80% of businesses fail. That's why 30% of Americans are on some form of antidepressant medication. That's why 60, 70% of people are overweight. I mean, in a way we're kind of fucked, but 